Zach Sang and the gang. Zach Sang and the gang hanging out right now in the studio. Kendall Schmidt, Heffron Drive. Hello, sir. Hello, is that... Should I... Yay, Kendall Schmidt in the studio right now. <laughs> Dealing good. That sounded just like I'm going to do this one more second. Go, go, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kendall Schmidt in the studio right now hanging out with Zach Sang and the gang. Ooh. You deserve to be on the radio. Thank you. That was really well done. You guys I try. should do the rest of this just back and forth like that. <laughs> I can do yours too. Hold on. Kendall Schmidt here <laughs> hanging out with... No, that's not... No, that's not no. Right. no. I'm really hard to imitate. It's uh, For some reason, it's hard for people to do it. Sasha's overall very hard to please. Can what you tell? What are you tell? Oh, I can <laughs> tell the tattoos make about? her look... Yeah, I look I look badass. I was just going to compliment you earlier. I like the tats, buddy. Thank very you very cool. much. She has a lot of, what's your favorite tattoo? Uh, I like my new one. The this flowers cool. are nice. The, the sleeve. What's your favorite tattoo? You have a lot, too. Yeah, uh, you, have, you have stuff. I just got one in South America. That was pretty cool because I, I got it in Buenos Aires. I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, that's fun. awesome. Um, the, the, the Boston Terrier, though, because it's my favorite tattoo artist. It, really? Yeah. Who the guy who did that is, is probably one of the most talented dudes in the world, I think. Really? Uh, he... He has a style like, you know, you would think a portrait would be like, that's the ultimate mm-hmm. yeah. t- um, talent. If you can do a portrait, it yeah, looks yeah, amazing. Yeah. But this guy has this oversimplified um, traditional style. Mm-hmm. And it's the kind of thing where one of his shading lines is like, right. you know, and you're like, that's the kind of line. That you're like, yeah. He told me before we did it, he goes, this is going to hurt. He goes, I'm notoriously heavy handed, but I'll get you done in 45 minutes. Yeah. And I was like, dude, no way. 45 yeah. minutes for that tattoo. That's he goes, crazy. 45 minutes. And this guy's got a full body suit. So he was like, Believe me, I know how much it hurts. I've done some of my own tattoos. Yeah, he goes, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you out of here in 45 minutes. And I kid you not, exactly 45 minutes later, tattoo done. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah that was the go. fastest one I've ever had. Where did you yeah, get no, that one yeah. done? Uh, Smith Street, Brooklyn. Wow. Yeah, he happened to be, like, he travels. The, Chad Copelinger is his name. Mm. K-O-P-E-L-I-N-G. So you Copeland. get a lot of tattoos yeah. when you're in different places. Well, Buenos Aires was the first international tattoo. By the way, had. that's scary to me, getting a tattoo. We yeah, did our research. Was a tattoo it, was a, it was a really or, great yeah. place. It was a really great place. It was, like, yeah. it was like a normal... No, I mean, they were pretty like Americanized as far as the... You know, yeah. I mean, they clean everything and just like any other place. Right. Well, it's good. It's not like yeah. you are going to some right, like, to hey, like come in the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come to my shack. Let me uh, you know, Hola, draw you. Come to have my a tattoo. tattoo <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't like that. Very cool. In fact, uh, I follow one of those guys and he's extremely talented too. Cool. So how's your life going right now? Life is good. Dude, <laughs> life is good for you, man. It feels pretty good. I, I feel like uh, I feel like my own boss. Well, I am my own boss. I, I feel like uh, pretty, pretty free to do whatever. How, how much pressure is that though? Like, I feel like it's a great, I, I get it, like, it's a great thing, but... You know what it is, is it's getting, you get used to certain things, and then, like, it changes, because I'm doing all this myself now, so, like, uh, I'll give you an example, basic example. Uh, flying first class. Yeah. Uh, Nickelodeon buys, they have tickets. to, they have to buy first class tickets. Yeah. Um, so, Not for me, but they did for you. <laughs> well, Only once. You know. <laughs> they had um, to. They had to, they had to. So, a first class ticket is, uh, let's just throw out LA to New York... 3500 bucks. Yeah. Yes. Maybe four grand, something like that. It's expensive. Um, times four, $12,000, $16,000, $20,000, <laughs> depending on how soon the flight is. Yeah. Um, so I don't fly first class anymore. <laughs> partly because I'm buying not just my ticket, but being the record label, I'm doing what they did. So I'm buying my ticket. I'm buying the band's ticket. I'm buying the manager's ticket. I'm buying the crew's ticket. I'm paying for all the cruise hotel rooms. I'm paying for the bus. I'm paying for the equipment. <laughs> so all that stuff How is all, it's extremely expensive. And it's I, I bet American Express is just cheering right now. They probably <laughs> love it. But um, that's probably the scariest part is is just making sure that I actually don't uh, totally run out of money before I actually <laughs> am accomplishing what I'm trying to accomplish. What a grown up thing. <laughs> it's very grown up. It's such an adult thing. Sometimes to worry I have to about. take a couple deep breaths. Do you feel like what taught you? Like what? what experiences your life was it mostly your time at nickelodeon that put you in a position that you felt like you can conquer I'll, I'll this actually, type of stuff and mm-hmm. my, my dad's gonna love hearing this um my dad has always stood mm-hmm. up against the man really? my dad doesn't yeah. like the man and that's and, and therefore he's always worked for himself yeah. him and his father worked together and they had this extremely successful business all through while i was growing up that's of, of retirement homes yeah and they they just always did that so working with family always made sense and being independent always mm-hmm. made sense because that's how he was so when this opportunity came around as much as i was scared I took all of what I learned from, you know, BTR experience and just talking with people yeah. and, and then also just being open eyed and observing other people's situations. And it made sense to be independent because that's how I was always raised. Yeah. You can't ever, you can never get to where you want to go in life working for somebody is, was, is what was always instilled yeah. in my head. So I just always kind of felt that way. And now, um, 
it, it seems that my pickiness and my um, stubbornness is perfect for this kind of position. <laughs> it's kind of scary. I get it. I get, I get what you're going through because we do it here at the radio show. Yeah. You know, it's everything falls on me and we partner with a bigger company, but yeah. ultimately it's us. And if you mess it up, it's coming it's, down. It comes. You. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no one else to blame. Yeah. And, then, and people and people are going to go. People are going to go. I knew it all along. Yes. You know, so you really have to be. I mean, I'm thinking about. I, I bet you that there's a vast majority of the Columbia Records team who are probably like genuinely curious to see how I do this. And you're exactly. probably your own your own worst critic anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah. maybe not. Maybe you're a kind <laughs> yeah. of yes, I mean, but no, I no. Mean, people who usually who go I independent. I second guess everything. Well, uh, yeah, that's what I mean. Like it, people who go independent usually kind of have that like it, nature of never being satisfied well, with their own work. Yeah. I also know? think it's it's because it's so much more personal. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, or is personal. No matter whether it's what you do or what we do yeah. or is personal to begin with. But right. when it's Coming out of your own pocket, Literally, and it's your, your name. Own and well, how about this? Yeah. Think about this. When let's say Sony picks a song for Big Time Rush to go as a single, yeah. If the song doesn't work, it's, it's their fault, fault. Yeah. yeah. Right. So if if in in that also being said, there's bands in record labels who pick their single because they're mm-hmm. like, you know what? Screw you guys. We're picking yeah. a single. Yeah. yeah. And then the single doesn't work. <laughs> the label goes, told you. Yeah. Right. So and like, then they chuck deuces. Now, and then you're buying. Yeah, then you're on your own. Now being independent. If it doesn't work, there's no one else to blame but myself. No. But ultimately, I actually kind of like that because right. um, there really is nobody to blame but yourself when something goes wrong. And and that was another thing I was always taught growing up. So it's just a perfect kind of job for me, it, I feel like. It's more of an entrepreneurial spirit. And I think even in my time at Nickelodeon, there was so much red tape. In order to get something from point A to point B... You had to jump through a lot of hoops. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Whether it was changing a flight or... Or how about, <laughs> not, or how about, or how about this? Wanting to wear a tank top. Yes! <laughs> we got Take pictures, different tank top options. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna oh, go ahead and God divulge sakes. this right now. Like, I can't tell you how many potentially, like, big time rush ending arguments there were with labels and stuff about clothing choices. Oh, man. They didn't want us to wear tank tops oh, because it showed off our muscles, and it was like. And then as soon as 1D came around and I saw these tattoos going all over the place. <laughs> By the way, I had a tattoo before I started in BTR, so yeah. they knew ahead of time that I liked that right. kind of stuff. And and. From day one, I remember the the photo shoot for the first album. If you look at it, we're all wearing boots. And I can tell you why we're all wearing boots. They put me in boots for the same reason. Here's why. Because I wanted to wear Vans. Wait. And I said, I want to wear Vans. It's me. You're having me in this band. I want to wear Vans. That's what I want to wear. That's my style. You should let me wear my style. They said, we want you to wear boots. And I was like, I'm wearing Vans. We want you to wear boots. I'm wearing Vans. It got to where they had to call my agent and my manager and say, you need to tell him to wear these boots. So begrudgingly, I wore the boots and I said, if this photo makes it as the cover, I'm going to be so upset because I totally lost them. And I totally love. So as much as I love the photo, all I see are those boots. Can you tell me why boots are? Can you tell me why boots are there? Everybody thing? thinks that boots are. I mean, I'm wearing boots now, but that's after. That's my own choice. They <laughs> lo- they I lo- decided to wear the boots. Today. I decided these boots. <laughs> those stylists at Nickelodeon love the boots. They, they love must boots. have put and me they love in tucking so in many shirts boots? behind belts. Oh, oh my god! Oh dear! I didn't understand any of it. it elongates the torso. Obviously, <laughs> sitting back and watching some of the stuff just that I've done there, I look terrible in all of it. Well, Not all of it, some, most of it. Yeah. Whenever, you know, like, well, <laughs> what, who... I agree, you looked really terrible. Yeah, yeah. I, it was, was so unbelievable. In the we long run, did it matter? No. <laughs> no. It didn't matter at but all. No, the things don't matter. No. 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 And if anything, you would think that, all right, so uh, a fan wants to know what their, what their favorite artist likes and the yeah. things that they do, so I always just assume, like, if you want me to be me, let me be me. Exactly. And, yeah. and I mean, they just... I thought the tank top thing was silly. Dude, it would be no tank tops on a summer tour. You can't wear tank tops because there's too many parents in the audience. And it's like, I think the parents are okay with arm muscles. Your arms <laughs> offend me. Yeah. Put them away. Now, who, like, because you kind of became the lead person, lead Tried. singer yeah. for Big Time Rush. Was that like a group decision? Was that a you decision? Was that a that Nickelodeon was, decision? Well, if you, all right, so I don't know if you remember the first episode, but if you look at the first episode, it was kind of like, um, it was, we all went, so James's character was like the one who really wanted to do music. Right? Yeah. And we are all small town guys from Minnesota. This audition comes into town, like an American Idol style. Yeah. And Gustavo is the guy who's looking for talent. So we go support James. We go through all these fiascos to get him there. Mm -hmm. And he blows it. And so the guy, Gustavo tears him up. And then I, in defending James, sing and impresses him. So the whole storyline is he wants to sign me. And I say, I'm not going without my bros. Yeah. That was the beginning. That was the very beginning. So in the very beginning, that just seemed like what it was. Mm -hmm. But then it quickly became clear that None Behind of us, the scenes none of us were going to be satisfied with not being equally split. Right. Yeah. Even though we all got the same thing. It was all even for all of us. Of but course. it still was like a, 
oh, why am I even spending all this time if I'm not like doing the same thing that he's doing? Exactly. He was like arguing about lines and stuff, stupid stuff that really, honestly, like she said, it really doesn't matter yeah. in the end. Yeah. You know, so it was like all that. And, and now, especially with Heffron Drive, like I didn't want to have to argue with it. No. And that was the first Man. conversation I had with Dustin. I was like, bro, like I'm, I'm going to be the lead singer of this band because like I, I want to like, I'm going to be the f driving force yeah. in this because yeah. like I could either do Kendall Schmidt music or I could come up with some random The Night Man. Yeah. I don't know. Something. <laughs> I and like release it. music like that. You like it? Cool. Yeah, it's good. I like that. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Next album, Kendall, The Night Man. <laughs> um, so, but I chose Efron Drive and I wanted it to be like, I'm going to be the lead singer of this band. Yeah. I'm going to drive it. I'm going to be the decision maker on creative. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, um, when the album was finished, I was looking at all the credits. I had written and co-produced every single song in the entire thing. How fulfilling Get him, is that? Get him, girl. <laughs> um, uh, extremely fulfilling. And if anything, I'm I'm actually excited to see that maybe one of my songs hits and like my actual full yeah. productions. I have three or four that I did fully produce everything. Wow. Cool. And and if one of those takes off, it's like, wow, people yeah. like my stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Because they might be thinking, I wonder what producer he teamed up with to do that. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. like, me? Me. You. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just, I don't know, I'm curious. Uh, there's really no way to know until it's out and people can go through it and decide what mm -hmm. they like. Now, because you do have a record label, have you started kind of looking at other artists? Have I you... always have my eyes open. I always have my eyes open. Especially, I'm looking for tone. Especially vocalists. I'm looking for vocal tone. Yeah. I want to hear someone that doesn't sound like anybody else. That what? sounds like them. Do you what? think that's still out there? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, think about, um, I'll give you a good, a good example in a, in a more adult world, but like Ray LaMontagne. Yeah. Yeah. When you hear a Ray LaMontagne song, you're not guessing who it is. No, you're like, you, oh, know, know, you, know, you know that's him. So I'm, I'm looking, if I was going to sign a band, I would want an original sound. I don't want any copiers. I think here, here's what the music business formula seems to be. Someone hits with something original and then everybody copies it. And, and there's about three or four copies that are successful. Exactly. Yeah. And then about 40 that fail, right? Yeah. So if you think about a boy band thing, like, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, uh, Big Time Rush, when we first started, we didn't even call ourselves a boy band because it was so uncool. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. And then we take off. Everybody scrambles to make copies, yeah. and three or four start exploding. One in particular, one D. Um, one had blew up, but that was a whole different kind of market. That oh, was like yeah, an older was... club market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there was a whole bunch of other smaller yeah. ones that just won't ever peak past right, a certain right. point. So I'm trying to set my own tone in music. I don't want ever anyone to ever be like that. Sounds like something. And I actually played one of the songs for uh, an interview I had today. Off the record, she's like, I just want to hear something, and I played it for her. She goes, Kendall, I'm really excited because. That sounds like you. How and I was like, oh, like, thank God. Like, probably, it sounds like me. First time you've heard that in a while, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, that's my style of music. I was the yeah. one who was like, that's the way it's supposed to sound. Yeah. And whatever else everyone else thinks about it is up in the air at this point. Is there a certain amount of pressure on you? One, because you're coming from something that was successful over at Nickelodeon. Two, because it is 100% you. There must be some form of pressure. The most pressure that I have is from myself. That, yeah. 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 100%. Isn't that scary? Um, yeah. I mean, I wish I, I, wish I uh, was satisfied with like the, the accomplishments. And like, I am, I I'm totally getting there. I totally understand where you're coming from. I'm getting from. there. And like, uh, it would be something like, oh man, there's only like 200 people here. And I'm like, wait, there's 200 <laughs> people here exactly. it's still 200 they, that people. paid money to see just what I have to offer. Mm -hmm. You know exactly. what I mean? So that, that, that's, I had to get over that immediately because you can imagine you go from 15,000 people in an arena yeah. and then you go to a club and it's like a shock, yeah. instant shock. So I threw my ego out the window mm -hmm. day one and I was like, starting over, here we go. At least I got to skip the van. No, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, you have a bus? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Got, got to skip the van. <laughs> That was the goal. Dustin and I always said that in the beginning. Before Big Time Rush, we were like, man, it'd be really cool to skip the van. And <laughs> we it. successfully Even skipped it. Even if you have it. to sell every there aspect of the outside of your van. I'm totally your, your broke, bus. but we skipped the van. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yes. living in the bus, but yes. I have the bus. I just filed Chapter 11, but I have a bus. Hey. <laughs> the bus is literally my house. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing I did that in a homestead state. <laughs> now, how scary... Is it though? Because I, I I get what you're saying when it comes down to like the club or you know having it all be on you. Because there's uh, uh, just speaking honestly, there's times where like I'll be on my drive home at, at leaving the show, right? And I'll be like, you know, we had a pretty good show, and it's you know, are we good enough? You know, what else can we be? What doing? is good enough? Yeah, yeah. that's exactly. You it. can drive yourself crazy if you don't have oh like a my second. God. Like, what do you do? Like to give yourself a minute. Like I always have to like read or something after the show. You like, know, I recently, cannot, like I can't just like think. You know what I mean? Like, I, I realized uh, I didn't have any actual hobbies because mm -hmm. as much as music's a hobby, it still is what I do all the time. It's your job. So yeah. I was like, no, it's your job. I was really got to thinking about it and about what I liked doing when I was a kid, and I really loved like woodworking. And I, nice. I, I'll tell you the cool. other thing I would do if I had the time. I loved botany. I thought gardening was a really cool thing. Cool. I, I thought something. <laughs> it's very therapeutic. Listen, listen. <laughs> no, 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 no. 
on, go, Listen, go. let me explain. <laughs> <laughs> to watch something go from a seed yeah. to fully... It's beautiful. And then a tomato... It's like a metaphor. Yeah. Hey, for guess life. what? Didn't come from the store. Like, right here. Yeah. <laughs> it's a metaphor for life. It's like a metaphor. Yeah, I know a lot of people who do that in LA. They literally... Grow, yeah. They don't have to go to the grocery store. My, my neighbors have chickens. Yeah. No, I know. I actually, Sweet. yeah, I know people yeah. who do that. It's therapeutic. To in the have middle like of a... Sherman Oaks, chickens. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, are you spending a lot of time in LA? Or are you kind of everywhere? I mean, now? well, like tech, my host, I, I live in Las Vegas, but yeah. because the music business is exclusively Los Angeles, I spend a lot of time there. But, do you have um, a house in both? Yeah, cool. Well, my mom's house is the one in Los Angeles because I don't live there. Yeah. So my house is in Vegas. That's pretty cool. Um, but but why, I spend why so Vegas? Much, because it's close. Yeah. Extremely close. It's a thirty-minute flight, yeah. and it's way cheaper. It is. Texas Los Angeles. Is better. Los Angeles. I. I grew up there. I love the city. Someone needs to do something about the prices. Oh, <laughs> it's just crazy. God. It's crazy. It's not. It's it's like there's a they extra tax for just living there. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, dude, I love the place, but like you know, Vegas is pretty cool too. Yeah, oh my thirty God. minute, a hundred dollar ticket for a thirty minute flight, nothing. No, okay. that is nothing. Pull into Burbank, you're already there. Yeah. Oh, Woo. you fly right into, Burbank. right into Burbank. Oh my God, that's so convenient. Yeah, I know. That's unbelievably convenient. The drive is actually nice only from the, LA to only Vegas Only people too. from California would be like, oh my God, Burbank. I oh know. <laughs> you know yeah. only that's so nice. They would get it. Yeah. They would get that. That's a huge difference from LAX really to cool. Bob Hope. Oh my God. Wow. How long does it take you to get there? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but Vegas for sure. And I, I never realized how much I was going to love it. I really love the place. Really? I think it's really cool. Now, are you ready for tour? I am. Get uh, the. Uh, I'm going to fly back into rehearsals, actually. Wow. I'm, I'm literally landing in the rehearsal. Um, <laughs> no, so cool. I go home. Yeah. I go home. I'll, I'll get home uh, on Friday, like Friday late, late, late. And I'm going to go to sleep, wake up, go to rehearsals. And I have like three or four days. Uh, and then the equipment starts heading on its way to Atlanta. And that's your first stop. That's the first stop. Cool. And we're playing like a ridiculous amount of new songs. So I have a lot of like quick learning to do. Wow. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you ready for the tour? Uh, no. yes. Yeah, of course I'm ready. I mean, if anything, I'm really stoked about um, the aspect of all the cool equipment I have. And, like, I'm on this mission for perfect sound. Okay. And I've become a real big microphone buff as well. Really? Yeah. Oh, what cool. microphone are you using? Um, well, now I just got my wireless mic. I got a Shure wireless mic with a Telefunken Ooh. M80 head. Ooh, wow. I don't know what that means. That sounds, that sounds <laughs> fancy. Great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> sexy. Sexy. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I got I got all of my I bought all of the microphones for the whole stage myself. So no matter who I exchange behind wow. me, I have the same sound. That's awesome. So I bought all that my own drum awesome. mics, which is very rare. Yeah, well, I don't think anybody cares. Nobody I think cares. That's, the, that's the problem with live performances is nobody cares how it sounds. And that's the most ironic thing is because that's where you're making all your yeah, money. Yeah, why aren't you? Why are you there? And making you know what? It sound you know what the, I was what I've realized the most with this whole thing is I think there is a vast majority of extremely popular, successful artists who have no idea how to run their own business. No. Oh, my God. You're 100% oh, correct. Oh, yeah, totally. No idea. They don't even know how much it costs to rent something. No. no. They have you know? no oh, perception yeah. of money. Why would they think about that? Yeah, no. they're, they're like, yeah. But they don't understand how important that is because the second that the faucet turns off, then you're left there with no information right. and you didn't gain any knowledge. And so this is a, I, I'm a realist. Like, I love Big Time Rush, and we're going to be a band forever. And yeah. the, the possibility of us playing shows is very, very real. Is, it, I, is it that it's real? It's very real. I mean, it just up, it's up to us. We all have to yeah. be on, on t equal schedules to make it happen. Yeah. And right now, obviously, that's just not possible because everyone's doing something mm -hmm. else. But, like, now I realize that I want to be responsible for my own business. I want to know how much it costs to rent these lights. Yeah. I want to know how much yeah. it costs to rent the board. And I want to make sure that I'm the one who picks the board because I want it to sound good. Sure. Yeah. You know, and, like, all that stuff... And I guess, it, like I said, it just plays on my opinionatedness. But it's also, I think Perfect. it's it's unbelievable because it it truly gives you different outlooks on the business. At, and if we were talking about three or four years ago that you weren't really subject to, yeah. you, you were shuttled as an from, observer. Yeah, you yeah. were shuttled from place to place, essentially told what to do and when to do it. Yeah, for years. Yeah, you, you didn't know? even know how much a car service costs. No, <laughs> these people didn't even know. <laughs> I had no like, idea. That's the kind of stuff. So. So now I've I've gathered all that. The learning curve has been ridiculous. I mean, not just the business, but even the production wise. Yeah. I I produced the whole, like I assembled the entire record in my home studio, and I had to listen to all the masters and make sure the mixes were right. Mm -hmm. And it's something as small as making sure the snare in that ten second part <laughs> is loud enough, like things like that. And I don't it's think anybody personal. pays attention. No. That's what A and R does. I realized finally, like their specific job is arranging the album. Mm -hmm. Sure, like, you find the songs and stuff, yeah. but they arrange the album, they make sure the masters mm -hmm. are done, they make sure everyone's paid sometimes, <laughs> and and they make sure the mixes sound good. Yeah. That's their right. job. So, basically, I've we've become A&R. Do you sleep? 
Sometimes. <laughs> like, like, do you dream? Your, your, your workload must be pretty crazy. Yeah, but like I said, I mean, I have a great team, people who really care about it, and and that's the most important thing I've realized is finding someone who shares the same idea and passion yeah. that you have. Like, he, he knows where I want to go, I yeah. know where I want to go, the team knows where I want to go, so we all work really yeah. hard. He's incredible, by the way. Yeah, this guy. Mike. Mike. He's a good egg. Yeah. Mike he's in the background. Everyone's like, who's that guy over there? He's <laughs> unbelievably smart. Yeah. Look, you, it. Look he's good. Are you blushing? Oh, he's, he's so cute. Oh, oh, he's oh, such a oh, smart guy. Do me a favor. Can we cut that part <laughs> out? <actually? laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, no, I'm just joking. Well, I mean, you guys have been on this journey together. Uh, it's a crazy journey, too. I am convinced there is a vast majority of people from the former executive world that I was yeah. a part of that probably think I'm out of my mind, but perfect. How great yeah. is it to prove them wrong? Oh, we'll see. <laughs> I no, you're you. already doing I mean, it. You're I already guess, doing just because you're. I know it like doesn't mean anything, but like just because you're doing it, you've already done it. You I know think what I mean? The fact that I finished that album and it's and it's on time and it will be in stores and yes. actually physically dis- distrib- distributed. Yeah, is a testament to the, yeah, to the learning. Yeah. And you do it the way you want, and the yeah. way it's, the, it yeah. sounds is the but way like, you want cool it to story. sound. Um, it's so it's so freeing to do what you can do. Uh, and uh, one of the fans actually designed the album artwork. Oh, that's oh, cool. Neato. Yeah, that's awesome. awesome. I yeah. love it. Uh, she had a better idea than I had, so she should have it. You need to do a press release about that. Yeah. That's a huge play. And she even got paid for it. This is a girl who doesn't what? even do that. Like, Wait. She just, as a as a fun thing. That's incredible. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I'll, well, I'll tell you that the backstory was we had a competition going for like a special edition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe we'll make 10 records with the covers on it. And we're still going to do that with the with the other ones that are the top picks of those. Uh-huh. But we got down to the wire with the producing of the production of the actual uh album like the way it looks mm-hmm. the artwork and i was like man what well, the idea i had didn't come through it's not conveyed well mm-hmm. enough it's just not it's not right and he was like take a look at those things i mean see if anything pops out and sure enough this one and it's so funny we had this like running joke with like dustin and like logan and i where it's like if something doesn't seem right just throw an egg on it yeah. <laughs> you throw an egg on it it's going to be great I mean, we all know that. Yeah, that's, a, gen- that's a good general. Yeah, we sure, don't love an egg. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, the, if the burger tastes like crap, yeah. put an egg on it. Put an egg on right? it. Uh, yeah, totally. Right. And if, you, if, you're, if you're brave, if the pizza tastes like crap, put, put an, an egg, egg on sure, it. Sure, sure, sure. So Did I you was put an like, egg on it? We put an egg on the album. <laughs> it is, it, and, and it made sense because she had persona, or she had like abstractly personified happy mistakes. Yeah. You drop the egg, it broke. That's a mistake, but the yolk is smiling. Like it just seems yeah. so abstract, Aww. but it was kind of funny. Like I it made it. sense. Wait, so let's talk about the title of the album, yeah. "Happy Mistakes." Where does that come from? Uh, the, the first song on the CD is "Happy Mistakes," and that was written obviously before I decided that was going to be the name of the album. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Dustin and I wrote "Happy Mistakes." Uh, that's one of the ones I produced at home, which I was super stoked about. Yay. Um, and the song is about not forgetting the journey, and yeah. if you're able, this is the way I've kind of like decided on the explanation. If you're able to reflect on the past of how you've gotten to where you've been, yeah. there's been quite a few happy mistakes along the way. There has to be. Yeah. You're right. Because nothing goes perfectly. Mm-hmm. Nothing goes the way you plan it. We all know that. And life is complicated. And sometimes mistakes happen, but you don't even realize that that mistake actually led yeah. to the great thing happening. Exactly. So there's a line in the song that says, let's remember the happy mistakes we might have forgot along the way. And so I was like, man, that line is great. Yeah. That's got to be the album. Because there's been a lot of happy mistakes in my life that led just to lead you to this album yeah yeah Yeah. i mean even starting heffron drive and and then not that it's a mistake but it's a total left turn of being like oh my god i got this offer for this show i'm I'm gonna put my band on the side and just forget about it and that was a risk and that risk immediately led to where i am now you're doing the band i mean incredible things and do you do you have big time rushes to thank for a lot of it what do you mean i mean just for everything that i mean not everything that you have now but i think that core fan base that you have access to, have you seen it grow? What, what, like, yeah. Well, I think there's some people who are still upset about the fact that we're not doing stuff. Yeah. And, and that's fine. I get it. I, I just hope that when the album comes out, they can listen to the music and just appreciate it for what it is. Like, because I'm that's not, what it is. It, your music is I'm just trying to have some cool music, man. I, I just, like I said, I just want to do something different. So that's up to them after they hear it and whatever. Yeah. But there's a huge group that are really supportive of it. There's some people who were Heffron Drive fans who really didn't care for Big Time Rush yeah. who came back. There's big time Rush fans who have converted. I've even seen like the really young ones who are like, "Oh my God, she loves your new band." Exactly. Um, like the really young ones, That's, uh, um, which y- is like cool. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm just hoping that this targets everybody. Yeah. I'm not really specifically right. targeting anyone. They're all love songs, but we all love. Yeah. Most of us mm-hmm. do. So, 
I mean, I don't sometimes. You don't yeah, unless you're incapable. Uh, yeah, well, I hello. tried a few times, it didn't work, so I gave up on the whole Bummer. thing. <laughs> and also, there's a couple songs that are universal on there that are just like about achieving something and not giving yeah. up, and and not in a preachy way. That was my main thing. I don't want to preach in a song. I don't want to be like, you can do it too. <laughs> like, that's not my yeah. goal. I'm trying to show that there's real struggle. Yeah. yeah. And that if you keep your head up, it's possible. And so there's songs in there that are like that. And there's also just blatant, like, uh, one's called Nicotine. And it's about being addicted to a girl as if you're addicted to cigarettes. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And it personifies wow. nicotine. It's really clever. Yeah. I, 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 I thought it was cool. So I guess Wait. we'll see what people think. I'm really excited to hear this. Yeah. <laughs> like, have you picked the next single yet? I haven't, no. That's that's like the next decision. That's the next move. Come up, yeah. You gotta do something for the fall. Mm -hmm. The fall, October. And that's another <laughs> thing is you have to decide: does this have a fall sound? I don't know. That's the whole <laughs> I mean, what is that? You know, what is sound like? Pumpkin spice latte? Does it sound like leaves falling? Leaves yeah. falling from the trees, um, brushing on the that's, sidewalk. That's the kind of stuff, by the way. These labels make yeah. these decisions on. So it's weird. Not, it's not a fall enough. You guys, song. it's oh. our job to know what the fall sounds like. Come on. I don't know what I don't know. I don't know what that means. But if it sounds good, I'm gonna like it anyway. But that's exactly why no one from LA picks a fall song. <laughs> yeah. Because we, yeah, don't even, we don't even know what that looks like. Right. So <laughs> one thing. Wait, fall? is there a different season? Yeah. Have you had to, always nice. Have you had to fire someone yet? No. Yeah. No. You will. Oh, by the way, eventually. Another cool thing. Um, I'm I'm using um the help of a lot of people that were huge fans of Big Time Rush. Um, the person who designed all the interior artwork was a massive fan of Big Time Rush, and she at one time gave me a mixtape okay. of you know the like made her own foldable mixtape and I thought that the artwork was unbelievable and I was like you're gonna work with me one day and sure enough she did well, she, cool. she did the awesome. interior artwork that's, that's pretty awesome. cool right? she saved my butt because <laughs> it, it was like I had some cool stuff but she made it exactly she did what I thought was cool about her yeah. mm -hmm. so it's like I mean she knows and cares about the band just as much as I do because right. she loves right, the right, band right. Yeah. so that's why it. I want those people to work with me I know people who there's fans who are extreme social network Fanatics. Yeah, mm -hmm. those are the people I want to hire. Right. Yeah, I don't want to hire someone who I mean knows about it because they they studied it. I right. want to know. I want who lives it, lives and breathes the product, and actually cares. Yes. So passion that's, is key. That's who I'm going to make my team. Yeah, th good idea. I might have an exclusively fan team. <laughs> no one's going to love you and your stuff more than your fans. Exactly. Yeah. So you haven't had to fire anyone yet. Nay. Have you ever come close? If anything, it's just like, well, we're not going to use them again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that kind of thing. See, I've had to fire people before. It's, it's just depressing. Oh, I, it's not, have it not continuing because um, I just have a lot of big ideas. And if yeah. those ideas don't come to fruition in a certain amount of time, I'm like, yo, we got to move on. Yeah. Can't, can't sit here and dwell on it. Let's go. Awesome. Yeah. Dude. It's all going, and man. You have incredible stuff, man. Thank Seriously, you. congratulations <laughs> yeah. on everything. Thanks. I'm like, you need to breathe every once in a while. No, yeah. You, need, <laughs> you, should, you should take a nap. It's overrated. Yeah. I think I naps are key. Naps are key. Power been, naps. I've been enjoying this Frequent lately. Frequent cat naps. No, you, you take a nap during the day? Well, the I'm not going to lie. The three-hour jet lag actually messes me up more than most. Mm. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I can do international easier than, than the three hours. Well, now you're not in first, so it's hard to sleep in yeah. coach. Well, yeah, right? Sleeping back oh, in coach well, with the You know the what eggs. the number one thing that you need is evolution pillows. I'll take an endorsement from evolution pillows. Do they really uh, work? What is an evolution pillow? It's the, the memory foam ones that are like... Oh, those neck guys. See, yeah, you need the not big ones. The, not, not the beaded. The, the beaded no, no, no. They the beaded do crap, ones man. are no good. They'll, They'll kill go. you. Hey, for all you people out there, don't buy the beads. Yeah. No, and they might be the cheapest at the airport store, but it's don't always... Don't be fooled! Worst idea. Yeah. Go without a pillow. Thirty-four ninety-nine mm. evolution pillow. You will sleep sitting up. Really? really? I don't know. Like I this, like this. That. I want to sleep like that. Mouth yeah. open, though. Still. <laughs> I want to sleep like that now. I'm drooling at the side of your mouth. You can't help you it. Just look over you wake up on an airplane and you're like... <laughs> <laughs> I want that. Yeah. Well, that's the only reason I enjoy business or first is because I can I've sleep. I've never been in business or first. I've oh. never flown first class. There was I, the, One of the last few times I was up there, there was... Uh, it was it was a one of the first classes totally not worth it because it's like what did I even pay extra for? This is one of the, like a small plane. Yeah. I should have just sat. Yeah, in coach. the back. So I'm sitting there and, and this couple girls walk in. And she goes, one girl goes, ah, oh, first class. Wouldn't that be nice? I mean, how much do you even think it is? And right as she's walking by, I looked at her. I said, not worth it. <laughs> and she looks at me. And she's like, why? And I was like, well, look. I yeah. mean, like, sure, it reclines two degrees more. Right. But it's just for this, oh, man, I think sometimes it's, it's for sometimes. the sake of flying first class. No, those pods, man. No, the pods I want to experience on the new American the... planes? Mm -hmm. I that's was a, walking... That's a uh, A321 
B. Yes. Oh my god, they're beautiful. Yeah. I was walking past like the po- the first round of pods on an American flight, and I was like, oh wow. Another then the second round, of, round pods? of pods, and then I think there's a third, and then there's first class, and then all the way back, and then there's me. Yeah. yeah. I was drooling. I was are, like, are oh. you the one sitting by the bathroom? I literally had the last <laughs> seat by the bathroom yeah. to LA. So flying to LA is worse than flying back Absolutely. over to takes the longer. east. Oh my god, it was the worst flight of. My, yeah. It was the worst flight. I felt ever. bad. I was I was standing in line for the bathroom the other on the flight here, and the people who were sitting there, there was like four four people in line and they're just trying to sleep and there's all these people just next to him like yeah to and pee. you can't do yeah, it yeah i was on the yeah. aisle i felt bad <laughs> like literally well, i might as well have flown in the bathroom sometimes business and first are the same thing yeah, yeah. that's what i mean yeah, yeah. yeah like like, Amer- not- like american like they're like they're very similar now don't get me wrong if somebody else wants to buy the ticket totally cool yeah <laughs> yeah and sometimes and sometimes i'll even be like you know what i'm gonna spoil myself i'm gonna go for it yeah. but i've realized recently that it's just the amount of time Okay, so it's like time equals money spent, right? Yeah, mm. it doesn't. No, 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 it doesn't. No. It doesn't. And and it's, an international flight may be business for oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You but, need that. But depending on how long know. the flight is, that's not saying I don't enjoy it. I'm just saying that it's definitely not cost effective. No, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> it's but, really nice when somebody else covers it. I can't tell you the last <laughs> time I paid for my own ticket to yeah. fly somewhere. But that's what I'm telling you. That's the stuff you don't even think about. I got to buy ten tickets now. Oh my, I f- I, I feel for you. I honestly feel yeah. for you. Welcome to the jungle. But dude, seriously, you have some great <laughs> stuff coming up. You have the tour coming down. Uh, when does the tour officially start? August 30th, Atlanta. And the show here is September 3rd, Irving Plaza. Good, Ooh, I'm coming. I'm inviting myself. Hey, cool stuff. Yeah, I'm inviting myself. We're all going. Yeah. And um, you gotta got get the album when it comes out. Yes. Yeah, so if is, you want to be cool, you can pre-order it. When does it come out? Um, September 9th. That's And like soon. I said, uh, physically, Best Buy, Walmart, um, uh, FYE. And Amazon, I think you can buy it, which I was like, I'm an Amazon addict. So yeah. I was I like, I, I bought it on iTunes and I bought it on Amazon because I want to have them ship me the CD. Yeah, with yeah. a little smile. <laughs> Take a picture of it. Is that where you yeah. can pre-order it too on, on you iTunes? You can pre-order it for delivery. Well, you can pre-order it on iTunes and you can pre-order it for, for delivery. delivery. Yes, so, I believe. Don't quote <laughs> me, but I mean, I'm pretty sure that's it. Otherwise, what did I do it for? No, yeah, what do you do? Um, September 9th. September 9th. And there's two versions. Regular is 11. And the regular is like, if you listen from song one to eleven, that's the arc mm-hmm. that I had planned. Like that's the plan. That's if you the last line of well, now you have to listen to it. Yeah, don't last, get over in the surprise. Spoiler, Let's spoiler, put it this way: spoiler. the last line's great. I, I, the reason I put the song last in the particular last song is because the last line of the song is great. I thought it was yeah. a perfect song to end the album. So if you listen to that that arc, cool. The deluxe has um, five more songs, three more originals, oh. and two remixes. Oh damn! Wow. damn. And, and if you put order the deluxe, you get the the parallel remix. Which is like face melting kind of stuff. I Ew. love it. Yeah. I want to hear it. There's I a little bit of this. Face <laughs> oh, I like that. Face melting. The face is very face melting. Yeah, I like it's, it. Obviously, it's melting right yeah, it's here. Melting yeah, off. <laughs> it's very melting. I like when my face melts. Yeah, and it's then a um, there's a song called "Could You Be Home" on the uh, regular that is also a remix, and that's really cool. My buddy Raz did that one, Ooh. and um, Mac, who's you might have met Mac once or twice. He does the radio uh, for Y100 Miami. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know him. Yeah, and when, when I did an interview with him, yeah. he's like, hey, by the way, I do remixes if you want. And I was like, sure. Yeah, he's Turns really out good. Turns out it was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really good. Wait, you know, your passion for this project and for everything you are doing and for your career is so infectious. Yeah. Seriously. It's admirable. Thank you. The best of luck, man, and whatever we can do to support you, consider it done. Well, I mean, th- this... This. Perfect. I'll take it. I'll play your song. All right, play it. Done. You, oh, what? Uh, you're gonna whatever the new single is. You gotta play that one. I will. Done. Word. People are gonna love it. Kendall Schmidt. I already new does. album out September 9th. Woo. Bam. Buy it. Pre-order it right now. Oh, Amazon, it's nine, iTunes. Nine. Yeah. Not. Oh, nine 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 nine, nine, yeah. Yeah, nine, nine and it's nine ninety nine. Wow. Uh, wow. For the regular and twelve ninety nine. I think that's a steal. That's a steal. Right? Songs. That is, right? No, it totally is. I mean, in this day and age. No. Less than a dollar Pre-order song. it right now on iTunes or you could buy it at Walmart. You get an hour of music. All that places. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. What a deal. Kendall Schmidt. <laughs>